What is up? Kevin Hale here on this Sunday night, October 8th, 2023. It is round of shots. Streaming on the X, Twix, as Carrie calls it, and the YouTube channel. Hope everyone is doing well on this Sunday night uh, weekend of college football. There's a lot of, a lot of good games as far as uh, the college football fan perspective. Not so much a good game for BBN. We're going to be talking about that. We'll look at the Missouri game next Saturday as they roll into um, Krogerfield. It is Krogerfield. Um, college football weekend, six takeaways, final shots, and more. Doing it tonight, starting off with the Michelle. Michelle Brown. What's up, Michelle? It's a uh, it's it's fall fall y'all. I'm digging it. You I know, am. Too. Some people call it football weather. I just say it's hoodie. And I say it means that my hair is not going to be as frizzy as it normally is. That's fair. Also with this, Jay Hayes. Jay. <laughs> what's what up? up Jay? What up? Oh man, disappointed. Disappointed. Yeah, I'm great. Great. We're going to gonna just Don't give your word yet. Yeah, well, we'll <laughs> yeah, that, that's that could be the the <laughs> word of the night. Uh, uh, who we got? Trevard Lindley, Trevard Trey. What's up, man? Hey, how y'all doing? Doing good. Good to see you, brother. Uh, Likewise. And rounding out our band of misfits tonight on the panel, the doc is in the house. John, how are you, man? I'm doing great, Kevin. Now, you claim that I am not a last minute fill in, but when I get the message two hours beforehand, you figure somebody on this panel had to drop out. I am a last minute <laughs> substitute, but that, that's okay. I, I, I'm not worried about that. In fact, you, you've asked me on here many times before, and I am sorry we have misconnected. I've been busy. I'm covering the Bengals. I've been on the road a lot. In fact, I'm out here on the West Coast right now taking care of some business. But I promise you that I watched every second of that miserable Kentucky-Georgia game. I'm still mad as heck. I can't wait to see what all these other guys have to say about it. Well, we've got some people who uh, definitely will have something to say. Um, and then there's Trey, who just he, he's a man, not so much of a lot of words, but it's straight to the point. It just gives Jay and Michelle more audio time. And I'm it's sure about time. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's let's get to it. By the way, my cat, Jerry, has joined us tonight, too. Just Hello, to... Jerry. Jerry in the house, too. Uh, the cat's. Georgia down in Athens because they were, I think when the spread came out last weekend, Georgia was up at 20. Was it 20? 21? At 19. The time, 19. 19. All right. At the time. And then I think by kickoff, it was down to 14. Um, I didn't touch the 19, uh, yeah, 19 point spread, but I did take advantage of the 14 point spread uh, and one. Just saying. I, I didn't that was my you know I'm gonna get into my take and feelings uh leading into the game and with with everyone but Michelle I start with you um the, the again the cats were uh like Georgia five and0 it might have been I don't know if we truly had a good identity with this team uh after five games based on maybe the the competition but georgia number one a lot of people in bbn very confident that we could give them a game could win i think everyone who was on the show last weekend saluting me uh said george or kentucky would be georgia what was in a word kentucky's performance last night in athens okay well you know last week my word was clean so this word, we got, dirty. my word is filthy, dirty, just dirty, dirty, dirty. Elaborate. Uh, for obvious reasons. I mean, you think that you kind of cleaned up a little bit of the mental game and they came out and made some of the most boneheaded penalties. Stop drives. Let Georgia continue drive. You can't go down there and stop Georgia just about in their tracks and then give it up for a boneheaded penalty, and then do it again. 
And because that's not quite enough, let's do it a third time because let, let, let's just really show that it was just dirty, 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 dirty. There. That's not the, we don't want that kind of consistency. No. And, and like I said, the things that we, we thought we were addressing, they kind of backslid. The things that were not a problem before, the punning game. Hello? Anyway, dirty. It's just dirty. It's your word. I go. took a shower after the game. I just want to say it was just that dirty. It was, yeah. Uh, that's that's fair to say. Let me, uh, Trey, former UK football player, is hanging with us tonight. Trey, what you got? What, a word and elaborate. Well, it's not really one word. Just it's about two or three. That's not fundamentally sound. Because someone played like the one three. play, the corner had his. Eyes in the backfield, and his receiver just ran right by him. So if he had his eyes on his man, it'd been uh, not so much of a easy play for Jordan Ben, but it'd been probably like a incomplete pass or whatever. But and on some of the gaps, the D linemen they were just out of their gaps, so we had like two D linemen in the same gap, and nobody had it contained for the quarterback. So the quarterback can just roll out. So probably that's my word. And we made their quarterback look pretty, pretty good last yeah. night. Jay, I'm going to let you back clean up tonight. So Doc is next. Doc, in a word, what was your take on? Yeah, emotionally, I want to say putrid because they stunk up the joint, as Michelle said. I'm holding my nose as I speak right now. But uh, I, I think if I were to look at it intellectually, I, I'm a warrior but at heart. And I think the word that probably better sums it up is, is concerning. Because I think for the very first time all year, I realized that Kentucky may have a quarterback problem. If you remember at the beginning of the year, everybody said that the success of the team was going to be based on how Devin Leary performed, whether he stayed healthy or not. I think we might need to revise that a little bit. It's not so much whether the guy's going to stay healthy or not. Is, is he really any good or not? Because we were all led to believe that this guy was going to be the second coming of of Tim Couch, but he's not Tim Couch. He's shown that he's not very, very accurate. He seems to get flustered in big situations. I'd say he's more along the lines of maybe a Morgan Newton or even a Jeff Speedy, maybe for that aspect. Uh, when you look at how Kentucky is going to perform for the rest of the year, uh, once again, I, I'm looking ahead. Hold that after, thought. Hold that thought. I've got it. I'm, right. That will be a talking point in itself. Okay. After all right. Six, so yeah. quarterback problems, very, very concerning. Very. Our, Man, you you see up. how the Kentucky media acts here. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding because he's he's absolutely right. Uh, lack of discipline on the defense. This was the worst. I, I wasn't – I mean, I am concerned about Devin Leary uh, because everyone – knew that Ray was going to run the ball. We had to go through the air to win this game. But I thought our defense could be more than what it showed. Uh, lack of discipline. Uh, you had guys – I had Van on today, shameless plug, uh, religiously Kentucky episode out. Now plug away, bro. Out. Yeah, great conversation there with Van Howes, and he was pointing out some things to me, you know, in this situation – you know, guys looking at, at at the line, they're just lack of discipline. Like, it, it was bad. Devin Leary has no zero dog in him at all. Off target, that would be another good couple of words. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm with Doc on that. But at the same time, <clears throat> I was happy that the basketball guys – and you don't see the media do this because – because it is a narrative that is pushed on Cal. But I did see people saying fire stoops for play on the field. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that's what happens with Cal when, when Kentucky players miss 23s. It's fire Cal. The players have to be accountable. They didn't execute on the field. Lack of discipline. That's what it was. Everyone, great takes. Uh we still got more to talk about. Michelle, circle back to you. Um, just kind of add to your your mindset from last night. What else kind of stood out to you? 
Well, yeah, you know, when we've had uh, these situations before going into a very heavily favored opponent, especially on their home field, and, and let's not understate the importance of home field advantage in the SEC. Uh, you know, and I, I was telling Anthony White last night, to me, it was the perfect storm of, the, this was the first real road game. I mean, you can't count Bandy. I mean, because that was, you know, more Kentucky fans than Vandy fans, and you had a crane holding up the scoreboard, all those fun things. But this is their first road hostile environment, very loud and hostile. And instead of hearing all week how there's no possible way that they've got a shot in this game, you've even got people in the national media suggesting this is how Kentucky can beat Georgia. And I'm... Now, there's there's some coaching responsibility here that you've got to make sure that your players keep their heads on, but I think they were believing their press a little bit too much and maybe didn't think they had to work as hard as they needed to work and didn't pay much attention to the game plan as they needed to do. And I think they need to have a big, giant, supersized, humble pie dished up to them, and they need to eat every last bit of it. I, I just, they weren't not, they had a moment and they weren't ready for it. No, that's, uh, that's a great take. Trey, um, epic failure kind of across the board. You know, Stoops and his presser afterwards acknowledged that it really wasn't a good week of practice. It's kind of what he sound, uh, what he made it out to be. But he also made it clear he's definitely disappointed in the quarterback play. Um, I'm not reading verbatim, but he acknowledged uh, Larry can't miss those passes. Um, but it was also a situation where he, where he, when he got it to the receiver, we still had drops too. So, what else uh, did you see from last night? I say, like you just said, uh, see what dropped the ball, and so Daryl Larry need to be more accurate. And one of times when he is accurate, it's like 50-50 at the receiver's going to catch the ball or not. So if you do the math, it's like every pass, is, he's got a 33% chance yeah. of completing. <laughs> so as far as last night, too, uh, I mean, Georgia knew – I mean, everybody knew we were going to run the ball. So I think Georgia's whole game plan was stack the box and make Devin Leary beat us – well, beat them. Mm -hmm. So they did a good job on doing that, and – their leads need to be more accurate and receivers need to help them out catching the ball. So six games in and we're still doc talking about uh well not still, but not having a, a passing game. There this it's the the argument that help me understand doc in the media, what was Larry Larry two years ago? This is what I've seen from with Larry two years ago, preseason ACC player of the year talked about being a first round draft pick. Now I know he's had the injury and I want to say it's, it was on his right side, either a shoulder or peck, but yeah, it was a peck peck. Larry is maybe the 13th <laughs> most productive quarterback in the league. And he's not even going to get a sniff. He's no one's talking about him at the next level. What has? Why? I mean, what? Where? Why are we at this point? Was? Do you think it was considered? You're. In, I don't know if you were part of. Did you able to tune in to the post the presser afterwards? Is it? Would it have been a disaster to give go to the bench, take him out of the game earlier? And see what else someone else see what someone else could do. And you start dealing with the mental aspects of the game. And, and, that's what and, and that that there are so many unknowns associated with that. When we've talked to Stoops after each one of the games, he has always been very, very adamant about defending Leary. There's mm -hmm. always been some excuse about balls. They need to help their quarterback out when he's in trouble and to to the most of fact, that's, that's been true. But I think for the very first time, we've seen Stoops come out and essentially say, hey, 
you got to make that pass. That tells me something. And that's why my confidence in going forward with, with Larry is, is really wavering. I'm not saying bench him right now. In fact, I'm trying to look as hard as anybody to look for explanations for why he's having the horrible season that he is. And by any standards, it's horrible. When you're only completing 55% of your passes against big name opponents like Akron and Ball State and, and Eastern Kentucky, then something is darn wrong. You can't do that, certainly not against the number one team in the country. What was he, uh, 38% completion rate yesterday? That is not going to cut it. So I think I think it's 9-1-1. I, I think this, this – I know you don't want to get into it just yet, but this game coming up is going to be just huge with a capital H-U-G-E. I agree. Jay, add to that uh, what anyone else has said or uh, your own takes. Another well, Kirby thing. Smart also in his presser said, you know, that playing in the SEC is you're you're a week away from humility, and that's what happened to Kentucky. Uh, like it was embarrassing, but especially you know I mentioned the defense; it, it was bad. Uh, not even counting Devin Leary, and I've had people like Van Howes once again uh, say, you know, he didn't do this at NC State. You know why now? What mm-hmm. what's you know he's hasn't changed any mechanics. Everything's the same. Same thing. What he was, you know. So I don't. I don't know. I know he's just. He's just no dog at all. Like mm-hmm. he's just. He's just there. Um, I don't know if it is time to panic because, like people have said, he did it at NC State. He he can do it. We have the weapons, you know. And I was one of the people that believed that Kentucky could beat Georgia. We have the talent to do so. We didn't. We got embarrassed, but Hmm. I I believe that, you know, Devin Leary had to come through at least throw 250 and and then rely on our defense. It didn't happen. We just got beat the whole game. I believe they had the ball uh, uh, a whole quarter than Kentucky did. So it's it it was bad. Here's your stat lines, um, stats from last night. We had uh, first downs 34 to 12. And just assume it's Georgia and not us uh, when I read all these numbers. Um, rushing yards, 173 to 55, passing 435, 128. They had 608 total yards to our 183. Um, their their backup quarterback had like 50 yards. <laughs> like he threw half of what Leary did. Yeah. And you're right. The time of possession was a quarter, 37, yeah. 22. Yeah. Yeah, they had the ball an extra quarter. <laughs> Jay, I, I do want to pick a, a little bit. I've got a little bit of a bone to pick with you, as usual, as I, I usually do. But uh, whenever you start throwing shots at, at media and criticizing the coaches, I know Stoops and Brad White, they can't get out there and right. make tackles on the field. But the entire demeanor of that defense, right. the way that they didn't show up, to me, that's got to be coaching. You've got to put a lot of that on on coaching, whether it was preparation during the week or whether it was where they stayed at that fancy schmancy hotel. What what was it called? The Chateau Elon Winery and and Resort. I mean, right. how many pedicures and manicures do you think that they got before game? Trevor, how many times did you get manicures and pedicures before your game, and did that affect how you went out and performed on the field? That's a or maybe one too many let, massages. Let me reply to that. So, so do you do you not think that these coaches and Anwar Stewart and all these coaches, Brad White, Liam Cohen, do you not think they prepared these guys to go out there? Do you think they prepared them to go out there and do this? Well, it's in, in the results. All I can do is judge absolutely by what not. I saw on the the screen. answer is no. Absolutely not. Yeah, because they they're getting to- paid big money to do so. All right, so they need to do their job, right? They so need to not show that those it, guys know the don't player. Show you have to hold to the player like accountable. Lack execution, execution on yeah. the field. Yeah. Yep, that's a coach. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, let's, I agree with sure. the manic, the pedicures and all that because yeah, that that was. <laughs> and but it the comes massages. down to execution on the field. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to go behind the scenes with Trey one day. What goes on yeah, in yeah, a player's, exactly. on a player's I what go, Friday, you Friday night? Uh, you we'll weren't staying at the day. Motel 6, exactly. were you? You were staying at nice places. So what now? Uh, you weren't staying at the Motel 6 during your time at Kentucky, right? That was what, back in mid-2000s? You all were already staying at some pretty nice places. 
I'll just have like Marriott's and I'll say mostly Marriott's. So what nothing, no fancy hotel. I would have thought Trey, you would have had your own trailer in the back of the hotel, <laughs> a big trailer with TVs and company. But you know, just kind of pick it. What's you know the coaching? What I think the the dialogue there with Doc and Jay's kind of it's what's in the middle here. Is it it? You have to think the coaches did try to put a plan in place um, for the players, but they didn't execute. You know. So what were you seeing? Was it, or were you seeing something where it was more players, or do you think it, it was on the players? Yeah, probably, I'll go yeah. With well, more, let me get. Let's see what Trey. Go ahead, Trey. I'm gonna say more players than the coaches, because the coaches call a play. You as a player got to go out there and execute. If one person, two people get out of position or mess up on the play, it mess the whole play up. And it couldn't be the perfect play. Just the players got to execute what the coaches call. So if I call cover two and the safety bite on some on the route with the corner and they got a go route, that's on a player and not the coach. That happened, by the way. No. And I, yeah. And says, I felt felt like the receivers weren't even trying to catch a pass. <laughs> uh, I mean, gambling did become legal in the state. So uh, <laughs> I'm is. joking. I'm joking. And Michelle, I mean, let me give Michelle uh, the stand now, just kind of piggybacking off of what you've heard. And... Well, I mean, I mentioned that, I think, in my last set of comments. There was, There is a certain amount of burden that does go to the coaches because they should be hammering at home all week long. You can't take this lightly. You don't need a pedicure. If you all win this game, you all can have pedicures all week long. We'll throw in some manicures, maybe a facial, steam, whatever, but get the work done first. And just as in, it's 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 kind of like what we see in basketball. You know, when somebody starts missing free throws, everybody starts missing free throws, even your 100% guy. It, it's it, something bad seems to propagate itself a lot quicker than something good. And you had, like I said, the bonehead plays right off the, right out of the gate. Sorry, my cat has a cold. Um, bless you. <laughs> yeah, bless you enough. Come on, Jer. You got to go to another room, man. Uh, it, you know, like I said, when you, you go down early, and just stupid moves. And the thing that's supposed to be your bread and butter, which is your defense at this point. The defense, which I actually gave a nickname last week. And boy, well, I'm going to take that one back. Y'all got to earn it again. Uh, it, it's almost like mentally they checked out by the end of the first quarter. Like, ah, oh, crap, we're not going to make history. Yeah. We've already blown it. And at that point, it, it just, you saw the writing on the wall. A lot of writing from last night, writing from last night. Um, you know, Jay, when I, I guess if you don't mind me, any spoiler alerts, you, you mentioned Van. Give me a, a, something else from that we haven't talked about from his perspective from last night. Uh, me, me, me. Because one of my questions was, you know, was the stage too big? Were the lights too bright? Seven o'clock game. You know, Sanford Stadium under the lights, you know, between the hedges, number one, number 20, both five and oh, ESPN. Yeah. yeah. So some of the defense, you, you have one job, do your job. And that didn't happen. Some guys wanted to be, hey, check me out. And and that was a lot of the frustration that was going on with the defense, you know, and I, you know, I even asked, you know, can you put any of this blame on on Brad White? Absolutely not. And that was the question that I proposed, you know, to Doc. You know, did you think these coaches didn't have these guys prepared? They they were prepared. They just didn't execute on the field. They didn't perform. They didn't do their job. Uh, so that was one thing, and it was it was just bad. He he believed that Georgia could win this game too, but so now you have to listen to all the trolling. Wait a minute. So he, wait a minute he believed Georgia could win or Kentucky? Uh, he believed Kentucky could okay. beat Georgia okay. with yeah. this roster. Yeah. You can argue that this is the best roster on paper 
that Mark Stoops has ever had. Roster. And, I'd agree. Yeah. I would agree. Um, Michelle had pointed out, you know, some some people will try to come at me with that. Michelle had pointed because of the backup situation. Now you have a guy that could come in and just and play, right. you know, just as good, if not better, as the starter. So, you know, and I said, well, you know, Mark Stoops is the eighth highest paid coach in college football. Right. Can you put this on? Even though Stoops took the blame, you put this on me. A lot of what he said was coach speak, but uh, it was just bad all the way around. I don't know if the stage was too big, but Van, you know, he he broke it down. If you haven't checked out his cut-ups, it's very interesting and very informative to watch what Van does and the breakups of the mistakes that the defense has made in this game. Uh, I, I really do believe that Kentucky has the talent – to hang with a down Georgia. I know that's weird to say because of the the performance that not they just that put far on. far down. They're well, not, well not, they're not last year and they're not the year before. Yeah. You know, uh, if you go look at the SEC stats, they're way down there. But, what you know, they showed against Kentucky, they look, you know, and, and that's saying something like, oh, the Georgia is really – okay, they play Kentucky, so what do you really think about us? Do you think that we were that good? Right. You know, so – it was bad, frustrated, but it, you know, you you lick your wounds and you move on to the next onward. That's that's what we need to do. Michelle's six games into the season, five and one. The truth is, I think most people. I'll I'll, I'll speak for me. I thought we would be five and one at this point. I thought Georgia was going to be the loss. I didn't think it. We would be, you know, it wouldn't wouldn't have been the result it was last night. I did. The Brad White's Ben don't break defense, how I see it. I thought Georgia was going to just eat us alive, which is going to pick us apart. And uh, that Brock Bowers is, was going to have another monster game. Um, but again, 5-1, and one, very realistic for a lot of people with the schedule we had. Um, what say you? Six games in. What is our identity right now? Um, see, the fact that I can't tell you, I can't come up with a word, tells you. No, actually, I, that is telling. Right. It, it, it is. It, the, I don't the know. Identity is unestablished. <laughs> or, you know, unestablished. That's the word, isn't it, doctor? Unestablished. <laughs> Works for me. If it's not a word, it's going to be by the end of this show. Maybe that's our word of the week. I don't have a whiteboard. I used to, but it broke it. But um, yeah, there's. I said we we've seen different components come together on a given week. But aside of the, from the Florida game, of course, we didn't have a passing game, but we didn't need it mm-hmm. because when you're you know one of those few times it wasn't broke, we didn't fix it, and and Ray Davis had a time. But, like I said, special teams has not been an issue. Punting has not been an issue. And that's when I'm talking about this contagious factor. Like when somebody's like just not doing it, not trying it, you kind of like, what difference am I going to make? Well, you get a 30 yard punt. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's and when the other one wasn't even that long, was it? 20 something, 22. Yeah. I mean, I was as, just as embarrassed by the punting as I was the defense. There's really. I, I think that this coming week, everybody said, you know, the Georgia game was the biggest game. No. Missouri is is really going to be the telltale game of the season. How we respond, how the players come back from getting their butts handed to them on a silver manicure platter. You know, how do they come back <laughs> and – uh See if they actually digested that humble pie that I, I'll be happy. You know, John, you talked about my home baked goodies. I'll be happy to bake them, you know, 10 or 12 humble pies, and I will personally deliver them to the, the – Put the word out there, Doc. I think you, yeah. you would be able to do that. Trey, uh, same thing, five – or halfway through the season, uh, five and one um, identity. What is your – who is this team to you? Uh, I don't really have a word for it because it seems like every week. <laughs> no, it doesn't. 
every week's been different for us. Like, yeah, played Florida. Yeah, yes. Running game was good, and pass game really wasn't there. But like Michelle said, didn't need didn't need a pass game. Right. And the game before then, we started out slow. The second half, we show up and want to play. So it's mm-hmm. like every week has just been just been different. And this past week, nobody showed up. So no way, yeah. hopefully next week somebody shows up or the whole team shows up. Yeah, we're we're definitely uh, talk Missouri real quick in a in a moment. But Doc, uh, again, identity six games in. Yeah, no, no identity, and I'm sure if we asked Mark Stoops that he would not be able to come up with an adequate word either. I think everybody, myself included, or two or five and one based on the schedule at the beginning of the of the mm-hmm. year. The thing is, there's a big, big difference between five and one and playing up to your capabilities and fulfilling your potential versus five and one with no quarterback, no passing game right now, and a defense that is too busy staying in plushy hotels to, to really play or to listen to their coaches. So to, to me, that's that's a big, big difference, and that's why this game coming up is so, so big in terms of the rest of the season. Uh, Kentucky needed to be 5-1 and one at the turn, but in order to really have that magical season, they needed to be 5-1 and one with – them clicking on almost all cylinders and they just aren't doing that right now. That's cause for concern. Jay identity. I think their identity is their defense, even though we didn't see it in the Georgia game. I I, I think our defense is strong, uh, but yeah, it didn't show in the Georgia game, but uh, moving forward, you got to flex, you know, and hopefully, hopefully Leary comes around to the NC state, NC State days. Uh, I I don't know, man. It, it it was it was frustrating to watch. I didn't even know they punted. That was a bathroom break for me. I was like, did Georgia even punt? Like they, they punted one time. That was that was my bathroom break. Uh, but uh, it was hard to watch knowing that this team is better. I I didn't. I mean, a lot of people say realistic is five and one. You you didn't. I I, I I'm not that person. Like I I believe. And six and zero, oh, you know. Uh, so moving forward, eleven and one. My my twelve and zero oh was shot. So eleven and one. Now we go. Uh, but I just can't, as a fan, the the type of fan I am, I I can't bring L out of my mouth. I'm just I'm not that kind of person. So uh, very optimistic, and I believe that this roster, the weapons we have, could could beat a down Georgia or not as good as last year and the year before Georgia. Um, so I, I was with six of one. I, I mean, like I hear people say, like, realistically, realistically, this team has the talent to beat that Georgia. Realistically. Did it happen? No, it didn't happen. So 11-1 and one, onward. Well, let's, let's move onward, Michelle. Uh, <laughs> M- M- Missouri is next. And, and I think we've all uh, we all agree this is a very pivotal game for, for this team. Might not be a bad thing since uh, that the the guys really got humbled last night. I mean, this the, if 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 the coaches can't get their attention, can't wake them up, a scoreboard and all the post comments afterwards, social media because they're, they're reading social media. A lot of learning. They're, a lot of that. Mich- Michelle, uh, Mich- Missouri, what say you? Well, I, uh, as you said, like I said, be, being humbled, hopefully they understood that was being humbled. Uh, I think that that bodes well. I think that now, uh, again, like I said, when we've been the underdog all these years, we've come out and like, you know, well, you don't think anything about Kentucky football. We're going to show you. And after last night's debacle, I would like to think that they're going to come out this week. We're not that team you saw last uh, last Saturday night. We're not that team. This is who we are. Mm-hmm. Missouri has been a little. I mean, like they're they're a strong team, but they've also suffered from some inconsistencies this year. And I think we've got to exploit every one of those. And the defense. Just better show up, 
Like I said, I, I don't that I, you know, I I'm not going to put that on Brad White. And there were actually people on on the X today demanding that Brad White be fired. Now some of the same people who last week we well, can't hang on to Brad White. He's going to be a head coach, and now we should fire him. So I don't think he <laughs> that much in a week. Uh, but we we've got to no pedicures, no manicures for the rest of the season. That's just a, you just can't have it now. Sorry, you blew that opportunity. And uh, to quote one of Stoops' most common and probably disliked by the media lines, we got to get back to work. Trey, uh, Missouri, what do you need to see besides, you know, everything? <laughs> uh, so, uh, everything we've seen on the Florida game, just usually after a big loss or a loss like this, the coaches say let's get back to fundamentals, so let's go back to practice and work on the things that they got to split it on, like big runs, what happened, how did they get a big run, passes, who got out of their zone or where was playing man on the receiver or the eyes was out in the backfield or, or on the man. So just pretty much get back to fundamentals. Yeah. You bring up a good point. You know, it's a, as a player, what benefit, what will be, what will benefit the players? Uh, I don't know if they practice today, Monday, say that tomorrow they're, they're practicing. Does Stoops and staff uh, play the Georgia tape? Or they just throw it away and go back to say the Florida tape. No, I'll, I'll probably say the Georgia tape. I mean, you play. But they you play still, Florida you, you ago, so okay. They don't need to play. They just play the Georgia. I mean, well, I guess no. My point is that there was nothing that the guys did right. So everything you would, I mean, to me, it was like an. It would almost be like you're going back to the basics. Uh, well, you got to start all over. You know. I mean, I'll say all over. Just watch, just watch yourself in the film room and see what you did wrong on certain plays, and as a whole, what happened on on the play. So, I say the players need to need to watch that film and okay. see themselves getting beat like that. Just what they need to work on during the week to prepare for Mizzou. Doc. Um... With Missouri coming up, what's you're at the presser? You get you get uh, you raise your hand when Stoops is taking questions. What's the question you say to him or ask him? Sorry. Well, I, I think sitting here listening to to Jay, I could probably <laughs> throw him a couple of softballs and, and, and make sure that I get in and on his good graces. But realistically though jay you are the kind of fan that i really aspire to to be i hate the fact that i can sometimes turn a little bit negative get a little bit cynical because i want to be that rah-rah fan like you but realistically speaking as i was watching that game i took great pride in the fact that i probably don't get as upset but after watching all those bonehead penalties, after watching that clock mismanagement at the at the end of the first half, after seeing the defense show up like they were uh, like they had never played the game before, I was ready to put my fist through the wall after one quarter. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I got to change. I got to make sure that I don't channel all that aggression when I'm asking Stoops those those questions. <laughs> uh, but M Missouri. Yeah, that's that's not the team that I think Kentucky wants to to rebound with coming off of this humiliating loss because they're going to put the defense to the test. Uh, you've got their quarterback who uh, can sometimes look all world. Yeah, he's been a little bit inconsistent also, but I think this is uh, he's had four, I think four straight. 300, three or four straight 300 yard passing games. One of the four, you know, he's got, actually, maybe. I think, it was yeah, he's got a receiver maybe. that's coming off three or four 100 yard receiving games. I think Missouri itself is averaging over 500 yards in offense for the past three or four games. It is going to be difficult. <laughs> I'm with Doc. Yeah, a, a little, just a little <laughs> bit, but I am getting better. You know, I'm drinking a lot of the Kool Aid over time, I'm taking a sip every now and then. One of these days, I'm going to come on with a full-blown rah-rah, 11, 11, not even 11-1. Well, I guess it's got to be 11-1 now. 
I was thinking 12 and now 13, 13 and one, right? 12 and one, 13 and one. No reason why they can't go to the national championship game still. Right. <laughs> the difference is, is I don't get in my feelings about a football game. That's the difference. But uh, yeah, I, Good. Missouri is going to be hard because of Brady Cook. Uh, also, I would like for the media to, like they do Cal, Stoops has got to answer the hard questions. Ask him some hard questions. You know, if we're going to do this for one sport, do it for the other. You know, like I pointed out earlier, Stoops is the eighth highest paid coach in college football. So ask him some hard questions. Uh, but Missouri, uh, Brady Cook is the man. So what's our re- receiver? Their receiver who's just oh, uh, what's it? The Bur- Bur- uh, yeah, yeah, Luther, uh, Luther, Luther, Luther Burton yeah. Jr. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty amazing. Yeah, stayed home. Uh, but uh, yeah, DBs, defensive backs, you have one job do your job. Let's get back to being Kentucky's defense. I think, which is the identity. And and I'm hoping for Devin Leary. Uh, every week, 300 incoming from Devin Leary. Like, I, I'm trying to speak it into existence. But, you know, it is what it is. I guess I'm that rah-rah fan. And we appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you and the rah-rah fan. But yeah, <laughs> with Leary, we don't need – we need a, just a better – Something to just keep the defense honest and do something just to kind of compliment. Is David. he sitting on the bench? <laughs> Who's, oh, I'm sorry, say Kyra Sharon. Is he, you said we need something better. Is he sitting on the bench? Well, I, 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 I <laughs> could we have, could we have played? I know it, it would have taken probably ruined his mindset. Definitely for the night, maybe for the rest of the season, but uh, I guess maybe. I mean, if, if Stoops is wanting mediocre, then why not play the second string? I, I mean, like, if you want mediocre from your quarterback, why not go ahead and play the second string quarterback? So you're saying that they should not have taken Leary out, is what you're saying? They should have. No, they kept, I, I, they what I'm saying is if Stoops is okay with mediocre play from a quarterback, why not put the second string quarterback in if you're okay with mediocre play? Oh, okay, I got you saying. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Uh, yeah, I, I got a tough question for Trey. Uh, okay, no, go ahead. You know, is uh, you know about playing defense and the mindset of the team coming off of something like that, what are the chances of, of fingers pointing and placing blame and, and uh, divisiveness coming on within the team after a big-time loss like that? Is that strictly based on the leadership of the team or the coaches? or What, what goes into determining whether this team is for the rest of the season? I mean, it was just only it was only one game that that we lost, so it's not oh, nothing yeah. to panic about. So just go back to the drawing board, go back to the film room, and see what see what went wrong. Now, That's spoken so uh, spoken like a true player and a coach who <laughs> keeps a level head, just knows of the grindstone, come back to work. I want a little panic out there right now in BBN because seriously, though. I think if you do look at the rest of this schedule, every one of these games are either winnable or losable. And in my mind, so much of it is going to be dependent on momentum. What is the mindset of the team? If you get in here and you lay another egg against Missouri, then you're going into this bye week with a horrible mindset. You come back against the big bad orange. If you end up losing that one, then I could realistically see Kentucky finishing five and seven at the end of the year. I mean, that's, that's just reality right now at this particular point. They've got to yeah. turn it around. They've got to get this mindset range. They've got to head it into the all. Let's, let's go. We've turned this around and come back and beat Tennessee and then win the rest of the games. Yeah. But just, it just one loss. So we'll see after Missouri. Now we lose to Missouri. I first say, 
panic a little bit, but until then, it's just one loss. So just go hard this week, play hard on Saturday. Yeah, I think it, it, that, you, you, to your point, Jay, I'll let you talk a second. Um, it would be hard from le- last night's game to do any finger pointing because it was just, it was bad everywhere. I mean, if you're pointing at me, There's oh, not enough like, fingers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, it, not you got to take se, out those pedicured toes and point them to. <laughs> it, it wasn't per se one part of the game, you know, one facet of the game, Jay. Um, but, you know, moving forward, I, yeah, I've got concern. My thing is, here. here's my uh, another thing. Stoops has this thing. Remind me, his contract. He wins seven games. He gets a bonus. Bonus. For, bonus. Does he get any added time to his contract, too? Isn't there I, I, something where if he wins either? I don't I know. I think all that added time is already is done. Already. Right but... Uh, you know, you, you keep winning, uh, they might add some more time, but, uh, <laughs> back to doc's thing with the finger pointing. Um, I, I think there will be a lot of finger pointing because is there a leader on defense or are there any leaders to step in and say, Hey, it, it's, we're a team or who's the leader on offense. Who's the leader on defense, you know? So. I think there will be until that person emerges and and says, "Hey, let's get back to it." But uh, yeah, no, that's a good point. Um. Yeah, it is only only one game. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying to take that in in mind. But as I tweeted out, you can't let one loss turn into seven consecutive losses. Yeah. And that's and that's a big a, fear. Yeah, that's I a big see fear a snowball effect back, coming yeah. on, especially with this backloaded schedule that that we're seeing. Eleven and one. Uh, <laughs> I like it, Jay. Yeah, I know. I'm. I'm. I, I. I appreciate the 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 uh, the fandom. I, I do, and I, I'm. I know we can be better. Uh, and last night, as just it was just very disappointing. Um, so. All right, Michelle, uh, give me a takeaway outside of Kentucky from the weekend. College football takeaway. Oh, I've been waiting all day for this one. All right, bring it. (laughs) Yeah, I have. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, and y'all were all like, yeah, Texas is legit. Texas is this. I did not drink the Texas Kool-Aid. And yesterday, I felt vindicated for not having drank the Texas Kool-Aid because weren't they at home? I don't know. I thought, don't they play a neutral site? That, uh, neutral site. It's, neutral a, it's site. technically in neutral, but yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's still in Texas. Still in right? Texas. Yeah, still it, right. like, yeah, I'm going to say it's closer, closer to home for them than it was for Oklahoma, but right. it just showed, you know, they're not fallible either. That's all mm-hmm. I kind of. But those are two good teams still. Well, okay. Oklahoma's good. <laughs> well, maybe they're better than they thought that. Maybe they're better than everybody thought they were, and maybe mm-hmm. Texas was not, not as good as everybody thought they were. I just kind of felt a little bit smart. Uh, yeah, give uh, me, I have my moments, okay? I felt a little smart on one topic, so I'm All going right. to ride with that one. And reminder, those two will be uh, in the SEC next season, uh, which you know could potentially add to our problems uh, as a, just a, as a whole. Trey, uh, from the weekend, what was uh, – anything else stood out to you? I'd say the Texas-Oklahoma game was good, and uh, Missouri and LSU game was also good. That was entertaining. Yeah, yeah. so. LSU was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. they got the, the two the two good receivers, I think. Well, the number arguably, the number bad, who's, who's better than Daniels in, in the SEC right now, quarterback wise? Jay, anybody? I don't it know. ain't Devin Larry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's I not what I was that. trying to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I, I would argue uh, Milrow for Alabama because he's just a pure athlete. But uh, as and far as quarterback goes, Jay Daniels is a beast. Yeah, he's getting uh, better, and that's why the Texas quarterback is really good. I know they're no, not SEC good. technically mm-hmm. yet, but he he's a top runner for the Heisman. So. 
Doc from the weekend. What else? Yeah, K- right. Caleb Williams, baby. I'm out here on the West yeah. Coast. Uh, I spent a lot of time in, in Los Angeles. I've spent more tuition dollars on Trojans, and I'm not talking about the latex <laughs> kind <laughs> than uh, the you, you would ever believe. The soundbite of the night. <laughs> a fight on USC fan. And they, of course, came through 43-41 over Arizona last night. Triple overtime. And the thing is, nobody here gives a hoot. So my takeaway is that we need to really be appreciative and grateful of the passion that goes with Kentucky sports, University of Kentucky sports, football. There may be haters out there, but at least people care. At least the media are invested. At least the fans are invested. But if you're out here and if you've got a team that's 6-0 and and ranked number nine in the country and moving up a potential repeat Heisman candidate and all anybody's talking about is how the Dodgers poop the bed, then you've got to realize how fortunate we are to be in Kentucky and the passion that we have with Big Blue Nation. That's my takeaway. All right. I like that. Jay from the weekend. Uh all Miami had to do was take yeah, a knee. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a knee. That, that's all you got to do. Uh, that was that was wild. Uh, you talk about coaching. That's 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 a coaching blunder right uh, there. That's that's, coaching. that's one that you could put on coaching. Right. Uh, so yeah, that was wild. But all these games that everyone speaks of, Doc, uh, Caleb Williams is uh, man. Uh, it's just. The Georgia loss, I expected more from Kentucky. Um, so I'm hoping that they learn from it and and come back. You know, like like Calipari says, if you don't win, you learn. So uh, looking forward to see, you know, the game with Mizzou. But uh, there were a lot of good games. This was a, a good weekend for college football. Uh, and what about Louisville beating Notre Dame? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. I thought yeah. I missed the memo. I thought no. there was a non-disclosure agreement I had to sign in order to come on <laughs> no. and not say anything about that. Now, let, let me say little, though. Let me say though. We're gonna get right. We're gonna talk about that right now. Big Blue Nation. Uh, they so Louisville beats Notre Dame, number ten, Notre yeah. Dame, and they're Soundly. on the field and they're on the field chanting, "F U K, F U K, F." Talk about rent free. Rent free. That's you true. just beat Notre Dame. You, you know, enjoy that. Stay in the moment. Instead, you bring us into the conversation. And how they laughed at UK fans each time, which I think is stupid, but when they're out in the streets burning furniture, they after here. what that were they doing in level? Man, there wasn't a sofa that was safe within 50 miles. Mine was. Uh, well, it's just going to make that but, Kentucky ass whooping a little sweeter. That's all well, that did. That's all that did. Let's let's <laughs> let's stay in the moment because I'm a, I'm a Louisville Louisville billion. I'm here. And, and finally, there it is. And we still talk to you anyway. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I bleed blue. But my but, uh, yeah. daughter and son-in-law, they were at the game. He's a Louisville fan, and you know, it was, it was great atmosphere. I, I want to say the attendance record. It was a big deal for for them in the program. Yeah. And let's be fair. Brom is, you know, he's home and he's he's doing okay with them. Um, guys, the I mean, there was only one way, and that was up from uh, where they were. Got, <laughs> you got you got get get rid of that. Yeah, it was a uh, uh, but but he's doing it. Here here's here's a concern, and I don't know if, if this is a BBN concern, but uh, there's a few people I've I've seen and talked to about it. Louisville's schedule is pretty friendly the rest of the way. And what what I have seen with them, what I saw last night, this is being a straight shooter, take the Kentucky fandom out. They could run the table. In, that's including us. We got to go there. And I'm just, I'm hoping um, we could take the going in, let's leave the them going 12 and 0. They could be eleven and one, guys. When we go to play them, they w- can be in the college football playoff conversation. At that, I don't think they're top four. They would be t- top four, but they would legitimately be in that conversation. That's 
that kind of that picture is not as a Kentucky fan. I don't want to be here in this, you know, that Kentucky, the Kentucky fan. I don't want to hear my Louisville friends having a good time. And that would be like huge for them. Huge for the program. Bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's all I got to say. I mean, am I wrong? Guys, I mean, are we, isn't, I mean, they're scared. They don't play Clemson. They don't play North Carolina. They got Duke. Who's the other? Yeah, Mi- I think they, Miami. don't they play like Miami or something? Yeah, Miami the is, or... they've proven they can lose. They lost, it was Georgia Tech, right? Isn't that who they yeah. beat? Yeah. Take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. I'm telling you, as it's, it's a Kentucky fan, that's, I'd be envious jealous and a little alarmed that Louisville could be better than us this season. <laughs> that's that's Doc, the I'm, fun of college football. It is you never fun. know no, what's going to happen. A and, yeah, and it's fun. so much more fun when actually when Louisville is, is good. I'm enjoying it because like Jay, I'm looking well, forward for to yeah. the opportunity to be able to really shatter their dreams because the whole yeah. implication of them um, uh, paying, paying rent or, or living uh, us living in their heads is the implication that they've got this coach who's come in and in one year has turned this program around. And here you guys are still trying to climb the echelon of the SEC. For me, I just want to beat Georgia before I die. One of these times, right? How many times have we lost? 14 it, in a row to them. Well, but when I it matters, beat Georgia. When it has mattered, when we've had the opportunity to play Georgia for first in the East, it's, it's not been competitive. And when it matters, we have an answer that I think the last seven games we've lost by double digits to Georgia and they've always been good. And we've always been mediocre. It's, uh, it's one of these things where, all right, why, why can't just for one year, let's have that magical season, just one year. That's all I'm asking. I've had 50 years of futility. There've been a few good years here now and then, but we haven't had that one magical year. Just once I'd like to beat Georgia. Just once I'd like to go to the SEC championship game. But, I, you know, after after next year, that's not even going to be the case anymore. Oh, no, we, yeah. What, oh, that's right. 12. It goes to 12. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Y'all want to fit in. Final thoughts about Louisville. But, again, as someone who's a Kentucky fan and has family who's – Louisville fans and friends. Again, this is not what I wanted yeah. to. Kevin, I think we can all take comfort in knowing that Louisville really isn't that good, right? It's it's kind of smoke and mirrors right now. So I think part of it <laughs> is the, the realization. <laughs> yeah, it's a realization that okay, eventually the hammer's going to fall, reality is going to hit, and we're going to be okay. But if it doesn't, and if they do go twelve and zero end but up in the championship game. You, I've got a room out here in California. You can come here. You can stay. Please. Just get away from it all. <laughs> That's all it takes? Okay. I'm going to get, like, very sick. But here, my, but to that's my point. The rest of their season is ACC games who are not – they're going to potentially run the table. And they will uh, you, be part you, of the – You have to remind them that. You know, once upon a time, uh, you had a Heisman quarterback and Kentucky was 24 point underdogs. And we came in your house, fixed a sandwich, kicked back, grabbed the remote and spanked that ass. I still want, I'll watch that replay. So, so like remind them of that. Yeah, that's what Just Kentucky relax, does. Kevin. It's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. You're, it's going to be fine. All right. That's just, that's, I guess, wreck. You're it, drinking reckless. the wrong Kool Aid. You're wreck drinking it. the wrong Kool Aid, man. Wreck. I was going to say rec spec, reckless no, speculation. But so really, really though, you on my part as a college football fan, not just BBN, but you, you like to see it happen to make to make the rivalry a little more than what it is. We've been beating that ass for some time now. You you like for them to be a little competitive, you know. Well, uh, there was a stretch about the same stretch prior to us dominating that they did. Yeah. So, but but to your point, I would yeah, I, I too would like it to. Like competition is a good a, thing. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Fair. All right. Let's do this. We're at the top of the hour. Um, good stuff. So I think we all agree looking ahead, Missouri is it's a 
it's a pivotal game. We're, and uh, let's let's hope uh, the, the guys uh, respond accordingly this week and Saturday. All right, let's go, Michelle. Final shot. What you got for me? Well, I'm not doing anything controversial. I'm not doing anything like real exciting. I'm just starting another one of my annual campaigns. Can we quit calling it a bye week? It is not a bye week. A bye is a, what you've got in a tournament. You know, like everybody's playing a game except you. You <laughs> earned it. It's an off week. You're off this week. It's a it's an open date on the schedule. It is not a bye week. You did not advance through anything from not playing it. It's not a bye week. That's just stupid, 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 stupid. And I'm never going to be behind the bye week thing in football. And that's all I got to say. Yeah, you know, Trey, while I, I I have to ask you, as a player, do you look forward to that? Off week. Off week. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Realistically, and, and you you were so active uh during your career. What what at what part of the week does your body fully is like ready to has healed up or gotten over? You know your Saturday game. How many days has it does it take you? Because you, is you being so active, what are we a couple of days where you really start to feel? I say a couple. Of, I mean, I played corners. So I wasn't really down there banging like some of the big guys. No, so but you admitted you were you like lettuce and tackles one year or <laughs> second. Oh, second on you were tackles. no, yeah. you're you were making a lot of contact back in the day. <laughs> is my point. So. He's like say... Van, He's like Vandy a day, Bama. <laughs> Four. <laughs> <laughs> probably say a couple of days. Okay. You get back to normal. But you, I, I'll probably say players do look forward to that bout. To that what? Oh, the bout week. <laughs> Off week. <laughs> Open date. Open date. For that pe- manicure, pedicure. Now they did Massage. that, you know, like during the biggest weekend of the year. They, they, yeah, they kind of got that screwed up, but yeah. I mean, you posted to scheduled down the bye week, but they did a little early. We are going to, I'm going to do round of shots behind the scenes with Gerard Lindley. What happened on those Saturday nights during your playing days? And if you won a big game, what happened later on the Saturday night after the big game? It depends on how no, 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 no. But... Save that. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> we'll All probably right. go out. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, staying with you, did you final shot? Did you who, who's no, next? Who's uh, who? Who did the final shot? I don't know. I where I'm at. Okay, no, Trey. Yeah. Yeah. You got a final shot for me, sir? Final. Uh, I probably say fundamentals. Get back to it, and have a good week of practice. See them Saturday. See him Saturday. Uh, Doc, final shot. Well, in case I don't get invited back on here again, I want to at least give my prediction for the rest of the year. Uh, I'm going to go analytically. They're just going to split the difference. They'll end up going three and three. So what that makes them eight and four, which is probably the sweet spot of what a lot of people predicted at the beginning of the year. I'm hoping it's 11 and one, but I will go ahead and say eight and four. But my real final shot is a shout out to my brother, Dr. Mike. Those of you may know him as the photographer. The Florida game and the Georgia game because he was on a medical mission in Peru. And some of you may have seen his videos that he posted on Facebook. But to see him out there just really giving his heart, mind and soul and medical knowledge to people who didn't have access to health care was really heartwarming to me. I am just so proud of him. And it uh, I don't want this to turn political, but here in America, we gripe about health care. I gripe about it more than anybody else, how inaccessible it is, how expensive the premiums are, how long the wait times are. But we really should be grateful for just being able to live in a country where the technology is there, where the medical people are there, where the brain power is there to take care of you if you are sick. But anyway, that's not the point. My point is shout out my brother, Dr. Mike. I love you. I am so proud of you. You Yeah, just real quick. Again, this is just 
my take. I'm not talking for anybody else, but sports again is no offense, Trey. It's it's a it's a game. It's you know the real world, Doc. What your brother does, the impact, you know, the, the just paying forward, whatever. That's reality, and uh, those are the those are heroes too. Yeah, it's uh, it's a matter of we all want to be able to make a difference in the world, no matter what we do, whether we play sports or cover sports or we are a doctor or lawyer or whatever. But we are out there and we want to be able to take our God given abilities and be able to pay it forward and pay it back. So uh, I just want to encourage everybody to continue to look for opportunities, no matter what you're doing, to be able to do that. You can make a difference in somebody's life. Mm hmm. There's, I heard something, Jay, uh, it's been a few years. We're all one deed away from greatness. You know, just doing, you know, doing right, doing, doing something good. And greatness is, you know, I, I were you know, going a little heavy here, but yeah, doc, good story. Uh, good stuff from your, your brother. Um, Jay, final shot. Eight and four is conservative as hell. <laughs> uh, I mean, Liam Cohen won nine games, you know, his first time around with a lesser roster. But I get it. I get it. You know, it is uh, Kentucky football. I want more as a fan. I'm that fan. I want more. But going back to Doc, we know a little about uh, Doc spending money on – Trojans, not those Trojans, he said. So now we know that he does not practice safe sex uh, with that comment. Uh, <laughs> but speaking of USC, it, I don't know if you were watching this, but they tried to strong arm a punter, well, a punt returner into touching the ball. <laughs> I don't, did, did you guys see that? No. Yeah. That shit was nut. They tried to force him. To touch the ball. That shit was wild to me. That's I feel for Doc YouTube. out in California. <laughs> it's crazy out there. <laughs> so uh just a little bit there, but yeah. Trojans. 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 Yeah. Hashtag. That's our Trojans. hashtag of the night. <laughs> it's been consistency for a few weeks, but we've just uh all right, good stuff, guys. Uh we are five and one after six in six games and um Second half of the season starts a very important game with Missouri. Six and Jay, six. And nine, let's. I, I'm all for it. Let's. Uh, let's. Let's do it. Jay, Michelle, Doc, Trey. Good stuff. Thanks so much for hanging with me tonight. Um, good to be with people, all you guys again. John, you that, too. Yeah, and, and John. <laughs> um, John, and thanks for uh, being the. Uh, Last minute replacement. Yeah, I got you. I'm still waiting for the end to get on guilt. Jay's show, right? If I'd have asked you Wednesday, you wouldn't you would have said no. But the fact that I reached out to you because well, you knew that I needed oh, probably needed somebody. I, I will also say I have never invited because I always see that you're somewhere in the world doing something cool. So I'm like, ah. Eh. He's in California. I'm all no for way. No, docking. There is such a thing as on the religious internet, right? Well, true. Yeah. True. John, Let's... last week I was a last minute replacement. I was so much of a last minute replacement. I got here and I was like, you know, I don't have a link to the show. So I had to send Kevin a text like, you invited me, right? So are you actually Never going muted to send someone me? on final shots? Are you actually going to send me the invitation since, you okay. know? <laughs> I also want to say I will be going to work tomorrow telling people that I know Trevard Lindley. So exactly. just saying. I'm using your name and clout. Bucket list. Bucket <laughs> if, list. I, if I wasn't retired, I'd do the same. But, you know, my cat already knows that I know you. So your cat's got the allergies or, or sneezing. Stuff. Something. Yeah. Well, he yeah. stopped sneezing. He had one little fit and like, he, he got his sound bite in tonight, too. <laughs> okay. Seriously. All right. Back hey. off, Gary. Everyone in the chat, thanks for hanging with us. It's always fun to wind up my Sunday night talking Kentucky sports with some good people. Appreciate you guys. Big game, uh, Missouri coming up. Uh, let's do this. Go Cats. Peace out. Good doc, and go practice, safe practice safe sex. Practice safe sex, Doc. Gotcha. I got Trojans. you. <laughs> <laughs>
because of gold. <laughs>